I'll start off by saying that Irv Wilson probably is the most influential person in my life, both uh, musically and philosophically. And it's probably his uh, nature as a human being probably has more to do with me spending 20 years studying his work as well as actually realizing um, many of his tunings and uh, acoustical instruments and uh, also doing what I can to document his work on the Wilson archives on my website to make his um, papers available to as many people as possible. First met uh, Irv Wilson through Walter O'Connell, was a physicist who worked at uh, LACC. Was quite involved in in new music. had had a paper published in Daria Stockhausen's magazine. And one day, when I went in there to ask him some questions about the shape of um, objects affected the the sound quality and the timbre. He didn't have that answer, but he thought that I should uh, meet Irv Wilson, so he gave me Irv's number and proceeded to meet him at that time. This had probably, this probably had to be in the 70s. At this point, he was working a lot with 31 Tone Equal because at that time he was, uh, had, had been communicating with a Adrian Falker. I once asked Irv why was it that he didn't actually write uh, compositions so much. He said that when he first got interested in music, he realized that there were certain things that were needed in order to do the type of music he wanted to do. So he thought that he would actually be able to influence the future of music more by solving these problems as opposed to you know writing a, a few compositions that, that uh, might or might not get played or played so much you know, later. He thought it would be better to actually solve these problems so that the next group of people who come up could have a much easier time. It's probably his main accomplishments are almost like a unified field theory of, uh, of microtonality where he's able to um, plot different types of scales using any size, uh, any interval you wanted to use. He has a way of developing scales like his moments of symmetry. Later on, he developed the uh, combination product sets, which was a way of having um, um, a microtonal system in just intonation that did not imply a, a strong tonic, and, and it was kind of, kind of the complementary to to Harry Parch's wor work. It's kind of like the female to the male, where, where it was, it was one way in which he describes it. Since then, he's also uh, developed the, the scales of Mount Meru, which involved all, all types of scales based on intervals the opposite of just intonation intervals, the, the um, uh, recurrent sequences or Fibonacci numbers, long irrational numbers that, that fit in between where all, where all these other um, just intonation scales, and he's, he's charted personally um, over over 200 of these, and uh, each one of these um, has, a, has a quite uh, quite a lot of flexibility, and that one can seed um, uh, the, the, the formula in uh, different ways. To even with the same formula, I get completely different results. The use of the word uh, seed is probably also probably another important clue to. Irv Wilson and that is his use of plants and that he has worked quite extensively with different hybrids. Traditional hybrids are done by breeding as opposed to man manipulating them chemically and at times is you know I think he saw each scale or each family of scale as being like almost like a plant species and that plant will create all types of variations 
that uh, that are kind of uh, determined by the plant itself. Over here, and that's the next one. This is the next one. You go there, and you go down to there. And by that time, you see five points. But if you keep on going down there, you get to eight points, and then you keep on going down, you get to thirteen points. With his mapping of keyboard, has ways in which could take a harmonic structure, put it on this keyboard, and fill in the blanks. You do that, he'll produce certain scales called constant structures that'll they'll have a complete melodic integrity th throughout them all. I know one time someone had sent him a check for $600 and that was payment for all, to send him a copy of all his Xeroxes and Irv wrote a letter back to him saying that um, he felt that would be unfair to those people who couldn't afford $600. He really would not accept any money for, for these lessons so I figure, well what is it that I can do that, that would um, most benefit him and I thought that the best thing I could do would be to actually uh, create music that actually illustrated some of his scales because I think that was the thing that uh, people say, oh these are just like theories and people didn't realize that these things are actually very uh, beautiful scales, that they're not just some mathematical games that a lot of uh, other people seem to do. These were things that actually were filled with, with immense beauty and so through the years I've taken a um, few of its tunings and built ensembles of these instruments in order to, and wrote music for them in order to give examples of what I thought were important um, scales. Yes, Irv is the great um, seed scatterer, I think. He, he really he really is. There, there's a bot botanical edge to this where he's, he's scattered all these different seeds and he's, uh, and, and he's, uh, which one of these, he's not really sure which one of these plants will take hold and continue to grow. And, uh, but I think that's the nature of his work. Is he, is he like a Johnny Appleseed? Well, only in the sense that uh, he kind of does it anonymously. He was never an academic, uh, although he's probably one of the most rigorous thinkers I know. He's very methodical and uh, very thorough in his work. His, his papers are sometimes a little very hard to break through. Most of them were designed originally as uh, they're like cliff notes to oral lessons. And, you know, he believed in the oral tradition of music and and passing things on orally and and basically these notes or piece of papers were um, a way of reminding the student um, of what it was that was covered in the lesson or or uh, covered in, you know, in the ideas of the paper. He, he definitely has some type of energy uh, about him that uh, separates him from most human beings I've known.